Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as stated, I'm Adam Jones and I am the technical on. engineer from Navy Energy Systems. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, my presentation for you today is to actually present a case study whereby we have replaced an oil central heating system with a ground source heat pump renewable heating system. So what I'd like to briefly run through, I would like to give you actually an introduction into Navy Energy Systems and who we are. I'm quite aware that many of you here may never have heard of Navy Energy Systems before, but after this presentation, trust me, you will be absolutely full of knowledge about them. <laughs> I then like to briefly run the Navy product range, essentially just casting our eyes over what an actual heat pump is prior to moving into the case study and showing you the work which was actually completed. And before we discuss the return on investment, I would also like to touch upon um, some incentivised schemes which have recently been launched, in particular for commercial buildings, and that is in the actual commercial renewable heat incentive. Just from a show of hands, can I please ask how many people has actually heard of the commercial renewable heat incentive? That's absolutely fantastic. I done one the other day and there wasn't one person in the whole room, and I just felt like I was talking to a brick wall. So essentially, Nibi Energy Systems, who are we and what do we do? Um, Nibi is a Swedish manufacturer based in Markenyard in southern Sweden, and we have been manufacturing now for around about 52 years. Initially, we started by manufacturing electrical components prior to quite rapidly moving in to the renewable heating industry. If we look at the company today, we actually employ plus 5,000 staff and we're broken down into three core areas. On the left hand side, we'll have our Nibi Elements section, which manufacture anything from components from aeroplanes to components for kettles and cookers and immersion heaters. On the right hand side, we have our stove division, which essentially is our room heater stoves. Um, some of them, what you, you may commonly know within the UK market, such as Stovax, and essentially these are biomass room heaters for domestic dwellings. In the centre, we have our renewable and sustainable division of Nibi Energy Systems. This actual division equates to more than 50% of our whole company. So, Nibi and Martin Yard. I always put this slide up because I think it's very, very interesting. Um, within the UK now, heat pumps have been around for around about seven or eight years, and people seem to have this myth that heat pumps will never work. This is our head office in Martin Yard. Um, just to put it in perspective, sorry if I can get a little bit closer. In the centre here we have our cylinder plant, and at the top we have our um, air source and ground source heat pump plant. There's around about 44,000 heat pumps manufactured per annum through Sweden. So it is a technology that works. It's a technology that works throughout the whole of Europe and has worked for plus 30 years. If you look at the Swedish market alone, 80% of heating systems are driven by heat pump technology. So although it's young in the UK market, it is a well-established technology throughout the world. So as you can imagine, around about seven years ago, um, the government decided to put a, a commitment in to reduce carbon and also eradicate fuel poverty. So Nibi saw potential there for heat pumps in the UK market. So around seven and a half years ago, we actually launched our Nibi UK division, which is based in Chesterfield. Um, we are actually a subsidiary of Nibi Heating. And one of the things we actually do pride ourselves on as being such a unique company in the UK is that we can help companies from project initiation right through to project execution. The way in which we do this is that we have an accredited installer network throughout the whole of the UK, essentially guys who are more than familiar with our kit and can offer extended warranties. So if you're looking to put a project plan together, this is something we can obviously assist with and do a feasibility study, etc. on your behalf. So probably the most important question in the room, why heat pumps? Well, essentially heat pumps can provide all of your heating and hot, hot water requirements for your building. There seems to be this myth around heat pumps where it's such a fascinating technology we we'll actually have to use something extra to produce heat and hot water. We don't. A heat pump gives you heating through a traditional underfloor heating or radiator system and it gives you hot water through domestic hot water cylinders. Another advantage of obviously using a heat pump is that heat pumps can um, operate at efficiencies up to and around about 400%. So 
So what we're actually seeing here is that for every one kilowatt hour of electrical energy, which we put into the heating system, we'll actually get four kilowatt hours of thermal energy out. So in turn, that leads us on to the next two bullet points. Essentially, dependent upon the type of heating system we are replacing, we can get a cost saving, and we can also get a carbon saving. Um, also, heat pumps, like you see, have been awarded actually um, government grant schemes, uh, and this is only for accredited systems within the UK, but we'll touch up on that later. Okay, then the myth. Heat pumps come in a range of models, sizes, and types. However, the fundamentals behind every heat pump maintains the same. A heat pump is designed to extract um, energy from the environment, absorb this free energy, and utilize this for heating and hot water within our homes. Now, the way we actually do this is by using a sealed refrigeration circuit. So in layman's terms, I'm sure all of us here have at once felt the heat that is generated behind our domestic fridge in the house. Yeah, essentially, this is where we are extracting the heat energy from, but obviously on a much larger scale. Just to uh, touch up on a couple of technologies prior to moving into the case study, um, probably the most common technology which you will see in the UK market today um, is that of air source heat pump technology. Now, an air source heat pump is designed to take heat energy from the ambient air, again, concentrate this and utilise it for heating and hot water within our buildings. The biggest advantage um, to use an air source heat pump technology is that your capital cost for investment tends to be lower over, over um, other heat pump technologies. The disadvantage is that we are governed on efficiencies via the ambient air temperature. Essentially, the less heat or the colder it is outside, the less heat energy there is to absorb. So with an air source heat pump, your efficiencies in the winter will be a lot less than they are in the summer. And the second most common one, which you will see, is that of ground source heat pump technology. Now a ground source heat pump is designed to extract heat energy from the earth. The way in which we do this is that we actually put pipe work between 1 metre and 1.2 metres below the ground. The reason why we hit 1 to 1.2 metres below the ground is that due to solar gain, we'll have a constant temperature of 12 degrees throughout the whole year. So instantly, the biggest advantage of using a ground source heat pump is that we'll have a stable temperature. So efficiencies tend to maintain the same. The disadvantage is you have to put a lot of pipe in the ground, so it tends to cost slightly more than an air source heat pump. Superb. Well, moving on then, um, I'd like to touch up on the, the case study, what we're doing at um, Walton Park, which is Walton Hall. Um, essentially, it's quite a, a high profile case study for us, and it's quite a unique solution, which we have given to the hotel. Um, as you can see, just from that photo itself, it, it's a pretty challenging building. Um, the biggest or the most unique thing about this solution is that we are actually extracting energy from the lake which surrounds the hotel. So in turn, within that lake, we'll have 2,200 metres of pipe, which services a 204 kilowatt total heating system within the hotel. So it's a large, com uh, large commercial installation. Um, just a bit, of, a bit of background on the hotel. Um, it's a luxury hotel, I had to put that one in there. Um, <laughs> it was built in 1742, and again, extended in the 19th century. Instantly, when you look at those dates, the first thing that springs to mind is that it has power thermal properties. So essentially this building is actually leaking heat. It's got a variety number of rooms in there. Um, I put this bit up essentially because the biggest area of consumption in a lot of hotels, and in particular in this hotel, was actually the swimming pool. The swimming pool is a 39,000 gallon, swim gallon swimming pool that was heated to 28 degrees, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And believe it or not, even on the evening, it did not have a cover. Mm. So it's just it's leaking that energy. It was previously heated, as we said, uh, by a, a 1980s oil boiler. Uh, this oil boiler in particular was around about 80 to 85% efficient. So it wasn't the most efficient oil boiler. And as you can imagine, um, the bills there were absolutely horrific, which we'll touch upon at the end. However, as with any project, the customer always has a set of objectives. 
Um, the first one in this instance, in this instance was actually to remove the long-term requirement for, you, from, for oil as a fuel source, um, mainly due to the price fluctuation and the cost of oil today. But they also want to remove the oil to reduce the health and safety risk of storing it and also any ecological risks of it leaking within the lake that surrounds the hotel, so it goes without a given. Um, they also want to reduce their carbon footprint through the, through the use of renewable energy, but also probably the most challenging one, they had to ensure that their customer experience was maintained. So the whole project had to be implemented and installed while the hotel maintained open which is probably is the biggest challenge on there. And as with any business, um, the return on investment was um, obviously one of the key factors in putting the ground source heat pump in. So I think we've touched on a few of these, but essentially the biggest challenge on there, the first one goes without saying, I think, the hotels on an island. I don't think you'll ever get any more of a challenging project than that, um, but it has proved quite successful. Um, the hotel did need a lot of um, draft proofing, except they're done. Um, mainly, before any project, we should be looking to retain the heat prior to supplying heat. So again, this was something that needed doing. The hotel did have an existing radiator-based system. Now, with um, disruption being kept at a minimum, it was not possible to replace the whole of the radiator system. So the design had to incorporate particular radiators in different areas. And as with any heat pump project, there was actually no room to install the heat pump. People are very um, interested in putting heat pumps in, but I would always say, bear in mind, you've got to actually put them somewhere. <laughs> um, probably one not for yourselves, but for, for us in particular, and it's something you don't really think about. Within this project, we're running a lot of pipe works, the external works, etc. The walls in the building were actually two feet thick, and sometimes it was taking hours to drill through, as you can imagine. But it's something, again, we never, never even thought about ourselves. So our solution, then, essentially, what we've done is uh, we agreed a step-by-step -step, um, programme in conjunction with NEBI ourselves and also our credit installer within that given region. Uh, we conducted a full system design, uh, in particular on commercial properties, we like to take the design in-house ourselves. Um, heat pumps are a bit of a myth and the one thing that can make them even worse is if people get them wrong. So essentially it's something what we want to take in ourselves. In conjunction with the actual project plan itself, what we've done is we also um, integrated some draft proofing into particular bedrooms at particular timescales, again, just to retain the heat. And we use one of the laundry rooms um, for one of our plant rooms within the hotel. Probably the biggest part of the solution is we were actually taking out an oil central heating system to be replaced by an electrical driven system. So one of the things you actually have to look at is the demand on the actual hotel how much electricity is available. Um, so we had to do a lot of, um, of modelling, um, looking at the hotel at its maximum capacity and how much electricity it was using. And to be honest, one of the great things, what we did discover is that even alone by replacing um, the lighting within the hotel to LED bulbs, we could save enough capacity on the incoming electri electricity in order to install the heat pumps. So again, there's always solutions around it with these uh, carbon friendly solutions. So, Cut a long story short, because you'll probably be getting sick of us by now. Um, <laughs> the system was commissioned and it was um, done within the agreed timescale, which is always a winner. Um, it's never normally that simple. And also, we, what we've done was we actually put the application into Ofgem for the renewable heat incentive on the commercial side. Um, to show a brief picture, the actual heat pumps which we installed are here. And um, this is the second phase of the project. As you can see on the right hand side, that's actual whole plant room. I couldn't even get a photo of the whole plant room, that's how cramped it is. Um, we've got two 13, 45, 60 kilowatts and a 24 acting in Cascade. We've got a stored hot water capacity of 2,250 litres and we've got a thermal store for our heating system of 1,500 litres. And as we said recently, um, we put 2,200 metres of air collector pipe within the lake. There's a lot of pipe going in there. Uh, before we get through to the actual return on investments from the hotel, uh, I'd like to touch upon uh, the commercial renewable heat incentive. Essentially, the commercial renewable heat incentive is the world's first long-term financial support programme for renewable heat. Um, is everyone familiar with the feed-in tariff for solar yeah. photovoltaic? Yeah. It's exactly the same, but it's over on the heating side. So it provides payments, uh, quarterly payments, to commercial heating installations, uh, and these are for a 20-year period you will be uh, paid for. Goes without saying, obviously, your equipment must be installed by an accredited, what we call, micro-generation certification installer. And it's administrated by Ofgem, and all of your applications are on an individual basis. 
So the tariff itself, and there's two tariffs set for the commercial RHI, what you can obtain. If you're below 100 kilowatt installation, you can get 4.3 pence per kilowatt hour of heat produced. If you're above that, you then get 3 pence per kilowatt hour of heat produced. The way that this is monitored is it's actually measured by your heat meter within the actual plant room itself. Um, someone's standing up, so I'm going to get kicked off quite shortly. But just to finish, um, <laughs> quite interesting, it's quite fascinating to be honest. I, I couldn't believe when I got the figures back myself from the installer. Um, initially, the previous heating system was costing around about £45,000 per annum uh, to run for the oil heating system. So obviously we installed the ground source heat pump. This come at a capital cost of £120,000. It's a lot of money, as you can imagine, to put a ground source in. <coughs> However, the electricity bills for heating alone have now reduced to £8,150. The RHI prediction, because we've just got the application through, is around about £9,000 per annum for the heat which they are producing. Index linked, and they are, so obviously the payback there is less than three years. So just to summarise quickly before I get kicked off the stage, <laughs> um, we did provide a sustainable um, energy solution and the renewable heat incentive alone will actually pay for the installation. Although the outlay looks like a lot of cost, the return will actually pay for the installation in the right, in the right scenario. Um, it helped move on to the, the Green Tourism Board rating from silver to gold, which um, Wendy will run through with you now. And the hotel also moved another step forward to being obviously sustainable, whilst also reducing the ongoing running costs for the future. On that note, I apologise if you couldn't understand what I was saying from the accent. <laughs> um, I will be at the back of the room if you've got any questions or you want us to run through it again. But I'd like to hand you over now to Wendy, who will present the creative findings of the hotel. Thanks very much.